Yes, so God bless all of us this evening for tuning in to our Tuesday Bible discussion. And it's my prayer that all of us will be so blessed, so powerfully, and that no one will live here the same. Uh, let us pray that the Lord, gracious Lord, will bless us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this evening, the opportunity to look into your word uh, and also to be thought a bit more concerning slavery and your good plans for us and all humanity. So we pray that as we go into your word, help us to understand, help us to appreciate what you've done for us and also to respond. May the many people who are tuning this evening be set free, Lord, and let them live the life that you have ordained for them. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good. So our topic is God, the slavery system and the Bible. God, the slavery system and the Bible. And uh, many people have asked the question, why didn't God stop the slavery in the past? It's, it's been a question that uh, many people have asked and it's still something that many people do not have answers to. Hence, some have concluded that God condoned slavery because uh, they did not see uh, 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 in the Bible where God condemned slavery. But as we'll be looking at, the answer is very simple. Uh, God did not institute slavery at all. God had his own plan for humanity, but we rejected that plan. And so what happened was that greed, uh, the quest for power, dominion, led, led some great men and women and societies to attack weak and vulnerable families and societies, capturing them into servitude and also into uh, 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 slavery. So, so the stronger and the more privileged in the society in those days, they were attacking the vulnerable people and the vulnerable uh, families and communities through wars and other means, and also um, making them their own slaves. So God never instituted slavery. So, but as we'll be looking at, that God uh, gave us, when that practice became a widespread, he gave us godly uh, 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 guidelines on how, to manage that but when he redeemed his own people he, he gave them his plans that they should uh, follow so what God's intention was was that human beings will follow his plan but as we all know many people have moved far away from God hence they are doing their own things so I'm sure tonight's message will be a blessing to many many people we will also be concluding that when we reject the rule of God we then allow man-made, selfish, wicked arrangements to have dominion over us. And this calls for our leaders to rule us according to the word of God. If not, they plunge all of us into slavery, into, into, into something that will not help us to live well. I think uh, in the past, uh, the Western nations tried to uh, fight all those uh, authoritarian uh, leaders in Libya. Uh, uh, Iraq and other parts and even in the West we, we, we are not doing so too well in the sense that our leaders are not leading us in the way of righteousness and so and so if the leaders will lead us in righteousness then we will not uh, uh, you know be slaves to any wicked arrangement that will harm our destiny so we'll be concluding on that and also you know uh, learn some few lessons so let's look at what slavery is first that slavery is defined as a condition of having to work very hard without proper appreciation or, or remuneration or, or payment. So you work hard, you don't have rights, you work six to six, seven to seven. Uh, you, you must work hard, extra hard. And the money that they pay you or the appreciation sh shown to you uh, is not that good or adequate. So, but this definition was during the time of the abuse of the system. And so the moment you mention slavery, the first thing that will come into people's mind is the abuse and how unfair that system had been. So uh, in essence, a slave is someone who is not free to live. Biblically, sociologically, they may give a different uh, uh, definition. But biblically, a slave is someone who is not free to live the life God ordained for him or her. That, that is a slave. So we can be slaves to many, many, many other things. Uh, the general life God ordained for every human being is to be free from any domination, to pursue the destiny God, to, to pursue his or her destiny as God revealed, to worship God, 
and also to join God in his paradise after that. So, so every human being must be free to worship God and to live the life that God planned for you, your destiny. Nothing should uh, uh, prevent you or be a stumbling block or enslave you. In absence of that freedom, then we can say that we are all slaves to uh, many, many things. So what happened in the past that has brought to has brought this uh, movement of uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, simple because uh, in the past, uh, some wealthy uh, societies, nations, regions, they uh, went to places in Africa, other parts of the world, and bought human beings and resold them and used them as slaves. And so, and so their slave master did not allow them to prosper. They did not have land. They did not have their own families. They did not even some did not even have their own name. They lost their identity, their culture, and 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 you know everything. And so, when we talk about slavery, that's what we mean. That if 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 you are a human being and you are not living the life that God uh, ordained for you, then it means you are a slave to something. But again, what brought about this uh, movement going on all over the world is because of how in the past the black race. Were treated, but there were other, or you know, people who were also, uh, 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 became uh, victims of this uh, unfair system. And even as we speak, there are still different forms of slavery, different forms of slavery are uh, going on, based on the definition given. If you are not free to live the life that God has given you, ordained for you, again, then you are. Uh, a slave to that very thing having dominion over your life so although the old slavery system is over there are many people now who are slaves to many things so we have prostitutes they cannot really live the life as a man as a woman uh, 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 that that god or that we have those who are slaves to drug there, there are some people if they don't have drug in their system or they don't sell drug they cannot live they cannot survive and so somehow they are being dictated by drugs to live and that is slavery itself they are something who are slaves to sin because of their carnal nature and so they are not free uh, to be to love to be kind uh, all the time is they are wicked hatred you know by biting slander witchcraft sorcery they are not free to live because of sin then we have those also who are addicted to so many su different substances and lifestyles uh, these are all different forms of slavery then we have those also with evil behavior. Every human being is supposed to live good and pure and holy. And so if you are living, uh, if you have an evil behavior, you are a slave to that which is making you to behave uh, evil. Some too are slave to pleasure. So Friday, they have to be out there. Some, all that they think about is pleasure. So their life is dictated by pleasure. Again, you have to decide when and to, to, to have fun, for example. But there are some, if they don't have it, they'll go crazy. It means they are also a uh, slavery. Keep the definition of slavery in mind. Anything that does not allow you to live your God-ordained life in freedom, in love, to worship your maker, and to live your life that God has called you to live and to make it to heaven, that thing somehow uh, becomes your master. We will go into the word of God and get a bit of But let's uh, say a few things in the introduction. Again, some two are enslaved by carnal flesh. Some two are enslaved by forces of darkness. So they have evil spirit in them or influencing them to do what the evil spirits want. It means that you yourself, you have neglected your own destiny and you are doing that with the evil spirit uh, in your life, uh, you know, likes. And we have also those who are slaves to money, you know. They wake up, all they think about is money. So so, so as an introduction, I've mentioned some of the things that we can all be slaves to and not just that slave master relationship in terms of uh, uh, employment and also uh, 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 work to do. And so uh, let's read some, let's go into the word of God a bit. Having introduced this and then we will continue. We will look at how uh, people in the past, I mean, became slaves. And we will look at God's thought, his instruction concerning slavery and also look at a few other things. And I'm sure uh, this will go along. If you have any question. Uh, please just ask me and and then I'll be a uh, place to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to answer you. Any question that you have, yeah, yeah, let me hear from you. And then I'll be pleased to uh, give you an answer as best as possible. And so let's look at continue. And many people are not 
doing well in life because they are slaves. Romans 6, 16, 18. Our first text, Romans 6, 16, 18. Uh, we see how uh, we can all be enslaved by our common enemy sin. And as I said, that if you are not living the life that God has ordained for you, then it means that you are really under. Some people even their relationship in marriage and they are still slaves to their partners. And that should be because no human being should root over his fellow human being. We should only be root by the Almighty God. So our leaders our government and our prime minister our president they should lead us according to the word of god that is theocracy in that sense it is god ruling us through his word not them and so if they don't do that then they enslave all of us and god uh, will not be happy with that romans 6 16 it says that don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves you are slaves of the one you obey whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So when we obey sin, we become slaves of our sin. When we obey our slave masters, we become their slaves. When we obey anything that is contrary to the word of God, we become slaves. Because those slave masters were acting contrary to the word of God. That was the reason why the slave uh, people really suffered and still there are many communities who are so struggle, uh, struggling as a result of that. So anything we obey, contrary to God's word, uh, will become a slave of that. 17, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have, be, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So again, in the context of sin, you know, the writer St. Paul was telling the Romans that because they have believed in, in the Lord uh, through Christ Jesus, they are now free from sin. And so when people come uh, away of any slavery system, they become free. And that is what God wants every human being to uh, experience. And so to talk about slavery is quite a broader subject. Because it affects almost almost every aspect of us. Even as we speak, there are women who have been captured by some uh, gurus, and they use them as as prostitutes for the women to work for them, for them to take them to take money. There are some people who have taken young boys, and what they are doing is that the young boys they sell drugs and then they they take the money. They are of course, and then they are at, at all forms of slavery in our world today. <clears throat> So, uh, so what happened in the past is, is, is not gone completely. Uh, it's still around. And tonight is my prayer that the Lord Jesus will set everyone, every man, every woman free. In fact, we don't, then we don't need to be crying and protesting for freedom. But that, that will become our very uh, way of life. May the Lord set us free completely. So when we do that, we, uh, uh, when we, we obey anything contrary to that of God, we become slaves. Let's read Luke 13, 10 to 13. Luke 13, 10 to 10. How we can be enslaved by evil spirit. And normally this happens because if God's spirit is not in you, then you will become vulnerable to spiritual forces who are very bad and wicked. Uh, Luke 13, verse 10 to 13. I read, on a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hand on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. So, so, so this woman had been in that condition for 18 years. She had been crippled by a spirit. And so she was a slave of, of, of that spirit or to that spirit. And Christ set that woman free. And so slavery is not just that master slavery relationship, but it could be anything that does not allow you and I, every human being, to live the life that God has ordained. And spirits are not just responsible for uh, uh, diseases and sicknesses like what we've read. Even poverty, poverty, some bad spirit can be assigned to your life 
and you will never, never know poverty. Some cannot even settle down to marry because they have been enslaved. Some are always doing wicked things because wicked spirits are in them and they are always doing wicked things. So that is itself is slavery because God did not bring any human being into this world to be a wicked person at all. But because of what we are discussing tonight, some people, unfortunately, they end up being and we can, we can even say that the slave masters themselves were also slaves to wickedness. And that is why they could treat their slaves uh, in that way. But all that we are saying, they are not God's plan for humanity. Why? But because we have rejected God, we have given ourselves to something that's more powerful than us. Now, when, when God is not your God, when Christ is not in your heart, you become vulnerable and anything at all can capture your soul, capture your spirit, capture your life, capture your, your imagination and you become a slave of that very thing. May the Lord Jesus come into your life. May, the, may heaven, may heaven rules over your life that, that, that no human being, no evil spirit will rule. May heaven rule over your life in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and so and let's read about the, how evil spirit captures people. Second, uh, Timothy 2, 24, 26. Second Timothy 2, 24, 26. This time to do evil, not to cripple or to make someone invalid. Uh, Second Timothy 2, 24. Now evil spirit can take people to captive just to do evil all the time. And that is slavery itself. Uh, Second Timothy 2, 2, verse 24 to 26. Okay, so it says that, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponent must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. And so servants of God, our job is to teach like what I'm doing so that those that the enemy has taken captives will be set free. Once they uh, hear the gospel, God's spirit will minister to them so powerfully so that they will stop doing evil. So, so, so evil spirit can also take people captive to do uh, uh, their will. Satan and his demons, they are there. Okay, so let's, uh, we can read First Timothy 6, 10 as well. How uh, money, money is ma uh, it's an idol, mammon. It can also enslave many people. Maybe you want to read our first Timothy uh, 6, 10. Money is an idol, a sort of a god. So that can also rule people. And slave, slavery is simple. If something else becomes your master, you are a slave of that thing or to that very thing. Uh, at the book of first Timothy 6, 10, it says that, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many, many griefs. So, so money drives a lot of people to do all kinds of things. So money is, a, is, is an idol. Uh, uh, if, if you don't manage it properly according to God's instruction, then that money will rule over your life. So become a slave of Wherever money is, you want to go and get it, and 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 sometimes people destroy their life. Okay, so let's go to our uh, uh, focus on our main uh, uh, topic: slavery in the ancient days. How did people in those days become slaves? How did they become three main uh, means? The first one was through war, the second through kidnapping, and then the third also voluntarily they give themselves to stronger men. So through was uh, those who were strong in those days, they will just be looking around and see if there's any vulnerable family, a vulnerable small community, then they'll come and fight you. And if they're able to beat you, then you become their slave. That's all they were doing in those days. So every community, every nation, every people were always thinking of, uh, of, of protecting themselves or becoming stronger. If not, someone can just come and fight you and then you become that person's slave. And the second means was kidnapping. And so as someone, people can kidnap others and then they will sell them as slaves to others. And that, as we'll be looking at, attracted God's uh, penalties. Uh, it, it, was, it was forbidden by the law of God and was punishable by the uh, Exodus 
2160. So we are looking at uh, 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 how people uh, uh, became slaves in those days, Exodus 21, uh, 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 16. How people became slaves. And so if you kidnap someone, according to the word of God, you must be stoned to death. Exodus 21, 16. This is what the word of God says. Anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death. Whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kidnapper's possession. So those days people were kidnapping people just to sell them. So Joseph's brother, that's what they did to Joseph. They kidnapped him, sold him to the, I think, the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites also sold them to another group. And then uh, Joseph ended up in Pharaoh's house. But God allowed that, as uh, some of you know, for a very good reason. So, so people were being kidnapped. And they were sold as slaves. So, so just imagine the, the the system in those days, either through wars or through kidnapping. So, what others were doing that's the third means that people became slaves. The third means was that the, if if you think you are not strong enough, or no strong nation is protecting you, then you voluntarily voluntarily give yourself to a stronger family, a stronger coming to a nation. And then you serve them so that no one can come and capture you. So the situation was really terrible. And as we said in the introduction, this wasn't God's plan for us. But man's quest for power and greed, 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 and power and dominion led many, many, many people and great nations to capture their fellow human beings as slaves so that they will serve them. And as they do that, they were taking the place of God. So Every slave master, one day, unless they repent or unless they treated their slaves well, they will uh, meet God and also uh, give an answer why they did that to their fellow human beings. So we've just mentioned the three main ways that people became in those days uh, through war, uh, through uh, kidnapping, or they give themselves freely to people. But in our days, people. Uh, become slaves to things or things when they don't have God, Christ in their life. That anything at all uh, can take over their lives. Drugs, evil spirit, money, people. Then you become slaves. And it, what that means is that you'll not be able to live the life that God has ordained for you. So uh, sociologically, slavery in its different form cuts across cultures. In many instances, race has little to do with slavery. Stronger and powerful people captured weaker and vulnerable ones and made them their slaves. So slave, it wasn't just for blacks or white or green or blue. No, no, no. Once you are vulnerable, then if your neighbor is stronger than you, then it's likely the person can come and capture. Of course, there was slavery even among whites and also among blacks. Uh, in fact, I, I, if you go to Ghana, there are Ashantis, you know, had slaves those days. And some other tribes also had slaves. If you go to Nigeria, the same thing is seen. Even in South Africa, the same thing. So in, uh, in many instances, race has little to do with slavery. The whole thing is that if you are vulnerable, someone will take advantage of you. And even now, if you are vulnerable, someone or a system will take advantage of you. It's, it's, it's still ongoing. It's just that uh, sometimes we've lost sight of this fact. And so that's why everyone must... You know, you know, you know, have God in his or her life for God to protect and to keep you. And David uh, made sure that the almighty God was his God. And no one captured David. No, nobody could capture David because he made this great God his God. And God did not allow any man, any woman to capture David. So if you make this God your God, this almighty God will not allow any man, any woman to capture. They may capture you physically, but spiritually you are free. Spiritually, you are free to live and to worship the Almighty God. And when your time comes, you make it to heaven. So slavery is not just a physical act, but also spiritual act. It is also uh, something that has to do with our soul uh, as well. So sociologically, slavery in its different forms cut across cultures. And in many instances, race has little to do with slavery. And what happened was that stronger and powerful people captured weaker and vulnerable ones and made them uh, 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 I mean, they are slaves. So let's see what did God do about slavery. Uh, uh, in summary, then we look into the Word of God. So as we mentioned about about the slavery system was man-made, 
and it wasn't an arrangement from God, it was man-made. Let's keep that in mind. It was man-made, not that. God's plan was that every family, every tribe will have their own land to live on. That's God's plan. Right? So you have your family, you have your land to live on, this one has that, and then you're all living in peace, respecting each other. That was God's plan because this earth has enough space and resources for every human being. And that was why after the flood in the book of Genesis 9, God said that mankind should spread himself throughout the world. And Genesis 11, when mankind decided to come together, God scattered them again. Okay, if, if you come together and you are too close, sometimes if you are not careful, the powerful among you will, will just have dominion over it. So God said, spread out. And everyone should have land and resources so that you don't have to be fighting for resources because you're all coming together. The earth has enough space, land, and resources for every human being. But when we come together, then competition you know, uh, kicks in and the stronger and the more uh, privileged it will take advantage, advantage of the one uh, uh, who is not. So, 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 so that wasn't God's uh, arrangement. Greed and the quest of power led to that. And so... And so that I mean, I mean, the first time God gave His instruction on slavery, He gave to the Israelites after they have left the promise uh, Egypt. But they themselves had experienced uh, a slavery in in Egypt. They themselves, and so slavery was, if you like, a system of the world. And so God had not His people. We know God gave the Israelites the law for them to live that perfect ideal life for the whole world to see. How we are all supposed to live. Unfortunately, they failed, as you know from the book of First and Second Kings. Uh, they failed. So, but by the time God's people had the law to share with the rest of, of humanity, there was slavery already. And so, what God did was that, in addition to His plan, He gave instructions how the system should be how they got practice in a more loving, kind, and better way. Okay, but His own people, He gave them a different set. Of our plans to live, and so then uh, to, to say that God endorsed slavery, no, He did not institute it, he institute it, but He gave instructions how best we should live. And as we'll be looking at, if the world had followed God's plan, slavery wouldn't even have been a problem. Although it was man made, it, it, it would have still have been something wonderful. There won't be wars, there won't be kidnapping. There won't be, you know, fear. No, no, no. Life would have been very, very nice. And so they did not do that. So let's see what God said about slavery in the Old Testament first through Moses. So now Moses, the Lord giver, had the law of God. And in that, God gave uh, instructions concerning slavery. Uh, so the first one that we can say is that slavery was punishable. Uh, yeah, one, it was a punishable crime. To kidnap someone and sell or treat the person as a slave. Where we read, it was a punishable crime. We don't do that. Two, slaves had entitlement. Slaves had entitlement. So if you have a slave, you have to treat them so well. Make sure they don't become poor. And after seven years, let them go free. And when they are going, don't let them go empty-handed. And then the third thing that we can say in the Old Testament was that God expected the Israelites to treat foreigners, whether slave or masters, like themselves. So if you take someone as a slave, you treat the person as yourself. So if the person is a, is a, a man, you treat him as your son. If it's a, a woman, you treat him as your daughter. And Paul used the same concept in the New Testament to describe how God adopts us as sons. As sons. So all of us, we were slaves of sin or to sin. But when we came to Christ, then we were adopted to become God's children. What that meant was that then we are now entitled to all the blessings of God. So and every slave was entitled to the owner's property and blessings. Okay. Okay. And then that you treat the slave as yourself. So let's read a bit more. Deuteronomy 15. Then we look at the fact that slaves had entitled. Deuteronomy 15, 11. I mean, sometimes I see this. As our, our contemporary um, employee-employer relationship, your employer must treat you well, if not, is in trouble. And you must also uh, work hard if you are employed. And, and that's how God wanted, even though the system 
had already crept into uh, the way we live, God wanted uh, us to uh, treat ourselves uh, very, very well. Okay. Uh, we look at Deuteronomy 15. I think we are starting from verse 11 to 18. Okay. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be often handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. So poor people, bless them. 12. If any of your people, Hebrew men or women, sell themselves to you and serve you six years, in the seventh year, you must let them go free. So as I said, some were giving themselves as slaves for economic reasons or for security reasons. For vulnerable families and small communities, they will come and say, we want to serve you. Okay, so if someone comes to you in that sense, then... The person will serve you for six years. It means that you feed the person, you protect the person, you know, but the person will work for you as well. But in the seventh year, let the person go free. And when you release them, do not send them away empty-handed. Supply them libera liberally from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press. Give to them as the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you that is why I give you this command. So the Israelites themselves were slaves in Egypt. So they understood what it, it, it meant to be a slave. And God said, if someone serves you for six, years, seven years, let the person go and bless the person, right? So even they themselves in Exodus 3, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, God told every family, go to your neighbor and ask them for articles of gold and silver and clothing and shoes. And the Lord said, I will touch their heart so that they will be kind to you. Why? Because the Israelites served the Egyptians for years. And they were going. And God said, you cannot go empty handed. The, the Israelites must give you something. Because you've served them. And when they got to the promised land, God gave them the same instructions. That look, when someone comes to you as a slave or by any means, Treat the person well. And on the seventh year, let the person go. But bless the person. Okay? So that there will not be poor person on the land. We continue. 16. But if your servant says to you, I do not want to leave you. Because he loves you and your family and is well off with you. Then take an owl, owl and push it through his yellow. Onto the door. And he will become your slave for life. Do the same for your female servant. Do not consider it a hardship to set your servant free because their service to you these six years has been worth twice as much as that of a hired hand. And the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. So you see how God uh, modified and, and tried to uh, make sure that the people were all treated fairly Although that idea did not come from the Almighty God at all. Now, you may ask, I mean, someone asked me this question. What about if a foreigner, you know, came to Israel and then the person became slave as well? Uh, let's read the book of Leviticus 19, 13. And you see God addressing that situation there as well. Leviticus 19, 33. That even you have to be kind to anyone who comes to live. Uh, in your society, whether as a slave or as a free man. Okay, Leviticus 19.33 When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And so any foreigner that lives in Israel, whether slave or free, they must be treated like a native born. See how God did this for us. So those who argue that God condones slavery and the Bible never condemns slavery, no. They have to take time to study the word of God uh, properly. See, the abolition of slavery started because of the abuse, right? And so then even the church still was still led by, I think, either the Baptist or the Baptist, they were so instrumental in that. They really led, you know, that fight, that movement. And therefore that whole system uh, came to an event in some areas they are still doing slave trade and so um and so this is what god says in the old testament that it was punishable that it was a punishable crime to kidnap someone and that our uh, slaves were 
also entitled to uh, uh, properties and that uh, slaves must be treated like the native born. Okay, so let's come to the New Testament. What God said about slavery in the, in the New Testament, the first one is through St. Paul. The first one we say is that God condemns slave traders. First Timothy 1.10. In the New Testament, God condemns slave traders because uh, during the New Testament times, the slave trading had really peaked. It had become very, very established way of, of doing things. And so straight away we see here God uh, condemning. Uh, let's start from verse 8. First Timothy 1 8. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous but for lawbreakers and rebels. The ungodly, the sinful, the unholy, the irreligious, for those who killed their fathers. Dress for the sexual immoral, for those who practice for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars, the perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to us. So here he mentioned some sins, but he also mentioned a slave trader. So if you are involved in buying and selling as slaves, you know, you are condemned straight away, straight out. There was no, uh, because... During that time, uh, their system had become very corrupt. And so God straight away condemned it because the slave traders were not practicing what God told the people of old. So the whole system was uh, uh, strongly condemned uh, in the New Testament. So those who say that God did not condemn slavery, no. God f first gave us a very good guidelines. And if the people had followed, that would have been okay. But they did not. So the New Testament times, it was straight away condemned. And then later on, other a Christian movement uh, led the way for that system to be completely abolished. So the first one is that God condemned slave traders in the New Testament. Two, God gave godly instruction for already peaceful existing slave master situation. So in case there was, I mean, let's say you didn't know you have, let's say, 10 slaves, right? Okay, so now you have repented what you did was wrong. So what should you do? Now, God expects you to do the right thing. Okay, so then God will not condemn you because you want to do the right thing. Hence, you'll be referred to the Old Testament. So let's read Ephesians 6, 5 to 9. Ephesians 6, 5 to 9. So those who had slaves already, uh, now in the New Testament, they were told to now do the right thing. If not, they'll be in trouble. So here, the text speaks to slaves and also to masters. Let's read first verse 9. Ephesians 6, 9, and masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with, with him. So master, treat your slaves very well. The verse 6, verse 5, 6, 7 talks about the slaves, and I'm sure some of the slaves were being rebellious and, and showing all kinds of stuff, and it wasn't good for the church community. And so the word of God says, verse 5, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slaves or free. Now, and masters treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. And so that was a very nice read. In case people already had slaves and they want to repent, so they had to stay in that arrangement for six years on the seventh year. They say goodbye to them. But even before that, treat them so well. But if you are not ready to repent, it means that you are condemned straight away. And so that was the arrangement. So we've looked at two things. The last one was that God encourages freedom for slaves. God also encourages. So let's read 1 Corinthians 7, 21. 1 Corinthians 7, 21. God encourages freedom for slaves. 1 Corinthians 7, 21. Okay, so he says that were you first Corinthians seven twenty one, were you a slave when you were called into the Christian uh, uh, faith? 
don't let it trouble you. Although if you can gain your freedom, do so. Okay, so if, if you are a slave and you can gain your freedom in, in any arrangement, do so. Or after the sixth year, do so. So God encourages uh, slaves to be set free. Okay, pro if not, until proper arrangement is reached, then there must be mutual respect uh, between the slave and the masters. You know, I, I mean, that was what God uh, I, I, I set up for them. 22, for the one who was a slave when called to the faith in the Lord is the Lord's free person. Similarly, the one who was freed when Christ is, when called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of human beings. So God did not encourage people to be slaves of maybe. So in the church, in that Christian community, the arrangement was that slaves were encouraged to be freed. And until the time, masters should treat them so well and the slaves must also treat them so that they will all live together. You, you, you can see this, you know, as an employee-employer arrangement sort of where the employer must treat the employee very nicely and the employee must also work faithfully uh, for the employer. So in the New Testament, we see God also uh, speaking to humanity this way. Uh, we'll be concluding that when human beings reject the rule of God, we then allow man-made, selfish, wicked arrangement to rule us. And especially so if our leaders do not lead us in the way of righteousness. And so every leader must make sure that the people under you, you are leading them to God. You are leading them according to God's word. If not, you are enslaving them again. And it's not right. And if you do that, one day, God will demand an accounting. And so all this Black Lives Matter movement and all the little, little movements that have all come together, people are calling for freedom and for, for, for various reasons. But if we all, we all accept the rule of God, the theocracy, the rule of God, God ruling us, Nothing, no human being will enslave us. If not, we are vulnerable. Evil spirit, Satan, demons, bad behavior, bad governments, bad leaders, uh, our bankers, uh, anyone who is powerful in our society will have dominion over us. And hence, we cannot live the life that God wants us uh, to live at all. And so uh, the book of First Samuel, I think this will be our last, our last text, the book of First Samuel uh, 8, we see how the people rejected the rule of God and God told them the consequences. So when we don't accept the rule of God, if we don't want God to lead us, that means any man, woman who will lead us will enslave us. And so let's go First Samuel 8. It says, when Samuel, Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served at Bethsheba. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after this honest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramnah. They said, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when, they, he, but when they said this, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they, they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until, the, until this day. Forsake your name and serve another God. So they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his right so they rejected the rule of god they, they wanted their own king verse 10 someone told all the words of the lord to the people who were asking for a king he said this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his right he will take your sons and make them serve his chariot and horses and they will run in front of his chariot some he will assign to be the commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and sell others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariot. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendant. 
he will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourself will become his slaves. When, they, when that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. They said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. So when we reject the what we call the theocrats, the rule of God, and we want to do what other people are doing, what we do is that we subject ourselves to that rulership as slaves. Hence, they, if the rulers will lead us in righteousness, that is theocracy. Theo means God and Christ means rule. So the rule of God, that is what we need in life. And whoever, any, any man, any woman, who allowed the great God to be your father, your ruler through Christ. I tell you, nothing can have dominion over your life. You, you live the life God has ordained for you, although in struggle, but you still uh, live that life and make it to heaven. And if you don't allow God to rule you, then you become a slave to whatever thing that can capture your soul, your life. Uh, so in the same way, if we don't follow Christ, the Son of God, to be our Lord, uh, we become very vulnerable to the evils in this world to dominate us. So, so James 4, 7, we say, submit yourself to the Lord, to God and resist the devil. As you submit yourself to God, you have resisted the devil because then the devil will not have dominion over your life. Nothing evil will have dominion over your life. Church, our focus this evening has been on this great topic, God, uh, the slavery system and the Bible. The Bible contains what God says about that slavery system. And God, as we said, did not institute our slavery, but that he, if you like, gave us some nice reforms in addition to his better plans that he had for us. So if you like, then we, then we, then we have two options. But with time, human beings rejected God. And so in the New Testament time, slavery was strongly condemned and slaves were encouraged to be freed. Slave masters were told to treat their slaves with respect. And we also said that many people are still slaves of many, many things. Anything that has mastery over you is your slave. Sin, money, poverty, anything that sort of drives you. What should drive all of us is the love of God in our heart. To love him and to love ourselves and to love our fellow human beings. When any other thing, any other creature leads us, drives us in life, then we become a slave of that birth. May the Lord set all of us free. And I want to encourage our leaders to also lead us in the way of righteousness. If not, then they somehow enslave us and if they do that god will uh, one day demand an accounting so all leaders in churches in government in various corporations to lead people in the way of righteousness so that what that would that mean in practice that god is the one ruling us through them as we, we, we as we all had it before uh, the people rebel in first Samuel. it may the lord bless us and i pray for those who are who have become slaves of things, may Christ Jesus set you. Forgive your heart to the Lord Jesus. Let Christ Jesus be your number one. Your sins will be forgiven. God will give you his Holy Spirit to live in you. And with that, the Spirit of God will now lead you as a child of God. Romans 8, 4. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the true sons of God. May the Lord set us free to do great things and to live the life that he has ordained for us. Uh, before he calls all of us home uh, safely. I pray for those who have been affected by this uh, ancient slave system. We pray that may the Lord restore and, and, and comfort you. And we pray for better days to come. And we also pray for the peace of God upon all nations and all communities. We pray that the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the earth where truth, where justice and faithfulness will be, uh, 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 will be observed. Uh, and I think that, I think the church has a, a very important role to play in this, that we must continue to teach the nations the word of God. So that once people understand what God's intentions for us, I'm sure uh, they will live for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And even as we speak, many people do not have their names written in heaven, which means that so far Christ is not their Lord and Savior. 
And if that is the case, uh, the message is still there for us. Acts 2.38, believe in Christ and repent of your sins and be baptized. And then you receive the spirit of the living God. Then you become a child of God. Your name will be written in heaven. You begin to live like God's child. And when that time comes for you to be called home, you will go and be with the Lord in his paradise. This is the life that God has ordained for us. It's beautiful. But when we reject him, we become very vulnerable. May the Lord bless all of us. Uh, Shalom. Let me say hello to those online this evening. Uh, there are some of you online. May the Lord bless you. I can see uh, quite a lot of you online this evening. I can see Ajwa Sase, Enyaname Tram, Ama, Enima, Eje, Emmanuel, and the others online. If you are online, just say hello. And I will also uh, respond back and then we'll bring our teachings to a close. May the Lord set all of us free to live awesome, wonderful life, just as he has commanded. And we pray for those who are struggling in their marriages and relationships to be set free as well. Yeah, we also say hello to Georgia and Stefano and the many others uh, online. May the Lord bless all of you. And God willing, we will continue our discussion on Thursday. And so we say, I, I receive the peace of God. And that God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.